Isn't the long history of archery and the trades that supported it fascinating? Just look at this image. It's taken from the 14th century manuscript, the Luttrell Psalter. It's archers practicing at the butts. But notice the heads of the arrows. These are blunts, wooden tips used for practice. So this image got me wondering, how 600 years ago did they make these wooden archery blunts? And could I make them in the same way? But how were they made? And then I thought maybe, just maybe, they were made on a spring pole lathe. So this is a version of what is perhaps the oldest known type of machine tool. It's a reciprocating wood turning lathe. That is, it rotates the piece one way and then it rotates the piece the other. And during the rotation towards the operator, you apply a chisel. And in so doing, you begin to cut and turn wood. This one maybe loosely resembles the kind used in the woods during the medieval period. But before I could learn to make archery blunts. I had to make this, a spring pole lathe, and this is how I did it. Firstly, there's the lathe bed. This is a piece of pine and it's got a huge mortise cut in the middle, which allows the poppets to move backwards and forwards. These are the poppets, the uprights that support the workpiece. These are made from beech. In this version, one of the poppets is fixed, but this one here is held in place by a wooden wedge. This is also made of beech. The legs of this lathe are made from alder, not the best wood for the job, but freely available in this wood. So that's what I've used.
The workpiece on this version is held in place by threaded rods, which are spiked at the end. But I'm sure on the medieval versions, these were simply iron pointed pieces of bar. By using threaded bar on this version, I'm able to make small adjustments to avoid moving the poppet. And this is the treadle assembly. This is made out of alder and ash. The spring pole itself is also made of ash. The cord passes from the treadle to the spring pole and is wound twice around the workpiece. When the treadle is depressed, the piece rotates and when the foot is taken off, it springs back. And the motion of the lathe is like this, reciprocating backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. A wooden bar fixed across the poppets acts as a tool rest. I can slightly alter the position of the tool rest by inserting these wedges between the poppet and the tool rest. In this poppet I've drilled a well. In it there's some lard and I use that to lubricate between the workpiece and the spikes. So that's my very, very simple spring pole lathe. Now I've got to learn how to use it. First thing to say about a spring pole lathe is it's very low powered, which means it's more applicable to working green wood than it is seasoned wood. For centuries, these lathes have been used for making chair and stall legs and similar objects, and they've always been worked from green wood and then left to dry and to season. So, my first experiment with this pole lathe is with green ash. The green wood is initially shaped and worked into a cylinder on a shave horse using a draw knife. Ordinarily, this would be part of a split trunk of green wood, but in my case, I'm simply using an ash branch to create a practice piece. The poppets are then adjusted to suit the workpiece. and the wedge is put back in. The spike is used to create a small indentation in the end of the green wood around which it all spins. When the marks are made, the ends are lubricated and the drive cord is passed around the workpiece.
Now at this stage it's worth saying that I've never ever used a wood lathe before and the tools that I'm using today aren't really correct for a pole lathe. These are in fact carpenter's chisels. But I think, just for practice, they'll be okay. The first tool I'm using is a gouge, the aim of which is to start roughing down this green piece of wood into a cylinder. Firstly, it'll be crude, and the next stage it'll get smoother and smoother and smoother, until, hopefully, I have a cylinder of green wood. The next stage is to use a sharp and flat chisel, working with the bevel down, gradually removing the little high points created by the roughing gouge. So that's my first hour using a pole lathe and what a great deal I've learned. And although this is rather rough and rather crude, I've proven to myself that it is possible to make archery blunts on a pole lathe. The first thing to say is that my pole lathe is too light. I've had to brace it because during work it was rocking way, way too much and gradually moving around. And now it's very, very solid and works much, much better. Secondly, I've also learned that I must, must have the correct tools. Using just carpenter's chisels is not really the way to go. So I've got to get myself some proper pole lathe tools. I also had to spend time doing what you might call tuning the lathe, making sure that the treadle cord was correctly in line, otherwise it would just spin off the end of the workpiece. Making sure the workpiece was solidly in place, otherwise, ping, it would just disappear into the wood. I've also spent a lot of time just figuring out how best to use this tool. It may look crude, it may appear simple, but a great deal of skill is needed to use a pole lathe. And at the moment, I don't possess that skill. So, more learning for me. I'll see you next time to see whether or not I can really make a proper archery blunt on a pole lathe.